G'day scrappers, thought today I'd start on my huge collection of modems that I've got. Um, I must have at least a hundred modems sitting around of all different shapes and sizes and models. <laughs> and uh, I often get asked um, when I'm doing street scrapping and I pick up modems, seems to uh, have been a lot of modems lately, um, you know, why do I pick up modems and what's it what's in modems you know that's so special well they're nothing really special as you can see it's just basically plastic and one little circuit board but um, you know like I keep saying it all adds up and um, one thing is when they're in uh, in the hard rubbish uh, this kind of stuff doesn't get picked up by the the recyclers when they when the garbage truck comes and picks it up this just gets crushed into the truck and it goes in as landfill even though we've got a new policy of um, no e-waste in landfill it's impossible for the garbage truck collectors to uh, find a little modem like that and say oh that's that's e-waste you know uh, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, and if you see how they put the hard rubbish into the garbage truck, it's actually a crusher and it crushes it all down. Um, so, yeah, things like modems don't really get picked up and, yeah, unfortunately, um, it's just a waste. So most guys don't pick these up. Uh, even your PC guys that sell me boards, they pick up DVDs and PCs and stuff like that, but... Um, so here, like here's one, that's, that's quite a, a, a nice grade circuit board just from a modem, you know, uh, that's not a bad one e either. Uh, if you uh, just depopulate for gold recovery, well you've got a gold corner BGA here, um, yeah, so you know, tantalum capacitors even. So I don't hesitate in picking up modems, I'll take them all whenever I see them and uh yeah so i thought well today's good as day as any since it's uh mostly raining today so i thought i might as well uh get on top of all these i've been doing a, a lot of other things uh scrapping pcs obviously and uh doing quite a lot of pickups so um it's sort of like one step, uh, two steps forward, one step back every day. Uh, <laughs> it's, you know, when I think, oh, I've got a uh, three or four days spare here where I'm going to be able to process stuff. And then I start going for it. And before you know it, I get a call, come and do another pickup. And so, yeah, so, but that's fine. I mean, I can't complain, that's a quite a nice board, really chunky uh, flat packs here, good one. So yeah, uh, it's uh, the pandemic, as it was or is, has kind of uh, kicked off again. Um, we were starting to get clusters of second stage uh, virus in um, here in Melbourne and we're actually <coughs> here in Melbourne we're actually the worst state as far as the pandemic and now we're getting something like you know 150 to 200 people a day being diagnosed with this virus and well the main reason why is that they're doing something like um, 25,000 tests a day now. So they're really pumping out the tests. And I just find it really unusual that um, during the first wave of the pandemic, they weren't um, doing many tests. And it was really hard, unless you actually had um, strong symptoms of, uh, of uh, the possible the virus, they weren't allowing people to go to just do the test and, and then all of a sudden they said oh everyone you know go and get your test you know and they started putting up testing stations everywhere and um and well obviously 
they're finding a lot more people with uh, a strain of the virus, you know, whether they've got the virus themselves or not, you know, like they got the symptoms or not, I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's really strange. Obviously, the more they and the other states that are not um, in such an issue, they're not doing many tests at all. So that's why they're kind of avoiding the tests so um, they don't have to put themselves kind of in lockdown, I suppose. So it's really strange, really bizarre situation. And so now um, we're back to a six week lockdown for this stage two. So uh, it's just uh, never ending. Um, six weeks. So I don't know what that's going to do for my business. <laughs> um, Obviously, I can still go out and do pickups, you know, if it's for the business, but it's just uh, there's less and less places that are open that, um, and they're not thinking of recycling at the moment. They're not thinking of upgrading their their um, electronics. Uh, so schools have really quietened down, um, you know, but I, I still am getting pickups, luckily to uh, keep me going, keep the stock coming in. <coughs> Just not as much as, uh, as uh, I, I normally would be getting. Um, and so I guess all the recyclers are kind of going through the same thing. And um, yeah, I just don't know. Uh, this six weeks, is going to really uh, be a killer for the economy, I tell you. Um, you know, surely they can see that, they know th uh, that, and, you know, my, again, my conspiracy theories start kicking in. It's just sort of like a copper tape. You can just put that into copper if you like. Uh, yeah, my conspiracy theories start to kick in, and, you know, uh, <laughs> Not that I'll talk much about it, but yeah, uh, what is the agenda here? Um, is it to, you know, I mean, the economy is going to totally collapse almost, I reckon. And so I always look, when it comes to situations like that, I always look at who's to gain from stuff like this, you know, like we know who's 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 going to be suffering, that's pretty much everyone. Um, normal businesses and um, the average person. But is there anyone actually to gain from a, an economy collapse? Well, I don't know, really. I don't really know the answer, but I, I'm, I'm guessing that, well, I guess the only people that are to gain are those that control the actual monetary system. Um, you know, I don't know really, but, uh, nothing much I can do about it apart from just, uh, trying to follow the rules and, you know, I'm just sort of laying low and staying out of people's ways and, uh, we'll just see how it goes. But yeah, so as you can see, these modems, they're really simple. Obviously I've, I've undone the outside screws just to make it a little bit quicker um, whilst I'm pr doing it on video, <coughs> but pretty much a circuit board and you got plastic. Now, because I can send my press plastic off to recycled, um, it's a win-win for everyone here, you know? So, uh, yeah, so, uh, just thought I'd, I'd touch base with everyone on YouTube and uh, see how everyone's going and um, hopefully uh, you are all sort of uh, managing to avoid this pandemic and uh, and yeah maybe one day we'll all come to understand what this uh, was uh, about but geez I tell you what I'm setting myself up for a lot of changes. I, I'm imagining there's, you know, from all this, we're going to get a lot 
more changes as far as how we go about life, how we're controlled. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Interesting days, but you know, what do you do? We just keep scrapping and just keep going through the motions, getting my, so these are all mid-grade boards, unless they're something super, they're pretty much standard mid-grade boards or peripheral boards in, in America. Um, yeah, uh, it's been interesting days. So once I've, you know, you've undone the, the external screws, it's all pretty much straightforward, it's very quick. So this is why I like, uh, and there's another reason why I like picking up um, modems is, uh, it's usually a, a really nice job to do when you just want to chill out and don't want to do really hard work, um, scrapping or recycling, whatever you're doing. Uh, it's just a downtime. It's, it's uh, yeah. And um, I actually bought a new drill, finally, because the other one was just playing up too much. Uh, within half an hour, it would drain the battery. And about three days in a row, I'd pick up the drill and... Uh, try and work with it and it was flat and I'd have to charge it up for a couple of hours and I'd just lose a lot of time there so I just said I'll oh, bugger it I'm not going to waste my time with that drill anymore I'm going to uh, just go out and buy another one so I'm pretty happy with uh, this new drill I'll show you it's not a bad one, it's uh, quite chunky in that it's got a kind of like a little slot card you can take off, take off the gold pins and still goes as mid-grade board. Yeah, not bad. <coughs> um, <coughs> yeah, so the old one was your regular uh, Ryobi screwdriver. So now, because so many people have been telling me, oh, you know, why are you using a screwdriver? You should, you should get a, um, an impact driver, you know? And I didn't really understand what difference it was. And um, it still doesn't seem any different, really, apart from it's just shaped differently. Um, but from what I understand, like, when I used, used to use this one on certain, uh, especially uh, industrial type of machinery or something where I'm trying to undo the screw. Um, the screw would thread before it would undo. And uh, apparently the reason why is uh, the impact drivers, they are allowed to do that crack, that first little crack. So then um, you won't strip the thread because uh, it, I don't know, they're designed to uh, crack the screw first. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I don't really know, but uh, so I bought, you know, it's still a Ryobi, but because I use these batteries uh, with a, a lot of different tools that I've got, I've got angle grinder and uh, some garden tools and all that kind of thing. So I didn't want to change to, uh, you know, a top of the range model yet. So I'll just stick with this battery system. Um, but this one's a brushless, so it was uh, more expensive than the regular. Um, kind of uh, drill and they're a little bit w funny it's a bit wobbly but I, I imagine that's designed that's meant to be like that um, and yeah because this one had you know your screw chuck uh, this one's a lot easier you just sort of pull that out and and the thing pops out so really straightforward um, yeah so here in Australia this is uh, 200 bucks 199 dollars I almost bought a Milwaukee drill kit. It was about 700 bucks. Uh, I went there to the shop to buy one, but uh, they didn't. They didn't have the one that I was looking for in stock, so I thought I, I need it today. So I just went out and bought this. Anyway, that's enough of me going on about my drill. At least I got one now, and it's uh, reliable, and I can just keep on scrapping. Uh, so. 
sometimes hard to work out how to get in. So yeah, for those that were curious as to why I pick up modems, this is basically it. It's all basically just a circuit board inside, one whole big circuit board. So compared to most other things, uh, they're pretty good for uh, scrap, um, scrap boards. And also, but you know, the thing you want to take into account is if you don't have anywhere to get rid of your plastic, you do end up with a lot of plastic. So, but they're only small pieces and they're, you know, relatively flat pieces. So they're easy to get rid of, even if you're only doing small quantities and you need to, you know, unfortunately just throw them in the bin or something. Well, at least uh, they're not taking up a whole great deal of space and yeah so these white ones are starting to uh, come around a lot lately um, there's a few that i'm starting to notice like these uh, netgear ones they're the most common modem that i'm finding um, have been for about a year or so but now it's these kind of things and uh, well all the better for me at least it's a bigger board and that's what it's all about for me it's it's about getting as much weight for your board not that there's a lot on there but you know when you're selling it doesn't make any difference to me there's a little gold band crystal oscillator that i can pick off before i go to sell it um yeah yeah so i don't hesitate picking up modems either should you if you see them always pick them up you're always getting a good board like that's great value and pretty much 95% of the weight is the board of the modem. So, uh, good stuff, you know. As you know, can uh, take off a bit of steel here before we get rid of the plastic. So I can, you know, at least get some value out of a bit of clean steel. And look at that one, you know. And so I call everything like this pretty much modems sometimes they're switches even little routers i call modems you know because it all pretty much goes into the same uh category for me uh the boards aren't generally you know um don't generally go as high grade although this one is quite a a, a decent one it's got a gold corner ice um a bga there um it does have a nice Gold band crystal oscillator. I might test some of these MLCCs to see if they're magnetic or not. Um, basically, if they're magnetic, they don't really contain... Well, they don't contain palladium. They still can... Well, they can. I, it's, it's probably um, a real confusing one um, because even uh, your noble metal MLCCs they still can have a bit of palladium because uh, a bit of uh, nickel. So they still can be slightly magnetic. Um, yeah, one day I'll probably do a video on MLCCs again and just uh, re-clarify uh, some of the things that I've learnt um, over the... recently anyway, about MLCCs and... Uh, yeah... But for now, we're just doing motives. <laughs> I've got a few oddball things that I want to scrap out. It's all part of the this Wi-Fi sort of networking stuff. So I'll just get rid of these. Already filled a tub of plastic. Doesn't take long. All right, so, oh, actually, while I'm here, what the heck, it's, you know, I've been using this for about 12 months or something, but like I said, it still works, but as soon as I sit it down and with the battery in it, it just drains the battery, so I only get like 20 minutes of battery life, uh, it's uh, no real good, so, since we're here, let me get a uh, Torx. We'll see, uh, I've already got a few screws undone there, but bugger it. 
let's scrap this Ryobi out <laughs> and see what's actually it's made up of. I'd love to have, uh, you know, three or four different types of drills like the Ryobi, it's not the cheapest, you probably a Zito would be the cheapest, then Ryobi, um, then, then you get into the better stuff like DeWalt, and then Milwaukee would probably, well they're here in Australia anyway, the Milwaukee's are the most expensive by a bit compared to everything else. All right, well there we go. Well, and uh, <laughs> so you can see where the, it's burnt out a bit because that was when I was um, stripping copper wire and it smoked up. So you can see that it did actually do some damage in here. And that's, that's the cause of this um, failing and draining out. So I'll put this in plastic recycling as well. Hey, why not? And here, well, Obviously we've got the motor, and I'm not sure what part blew out. I think just uh, the motor must have sort of slightly caught on fire. Uh, there we go. So this stuff here, this mechanism I just put into scrap cop, uh, scrap steel. Nice little uh, gearing in there. Still, you know, they're not, these ones aren't that expensive, and still a lot of stuff goes into it. A lot of work goes into that. You know, compared to other things like electronics, where they don't put virtually anything into it and they charge an arm and a leg. Um, but oh well, at least we've got a nice motor here, and I've got grease all over me now. I'm going to go and wash my hands, but uh, yeah, bit of a motor bit of stuff here huh. could even keep that as a trigger for something else you know a r electronic uh, like a ray gun or something you know all right now I've got greasy hands I'll just go and clean up and I'll continue on with these modems but I got these oddball Wi-Fi sort of uh, things there I'll, I'll scrap these out next yeah so uh, I wanted to do these two uh, these just came in from a school pickup I just did um, they look like kind of like smoke alarms or something you know <laughs> that's what I initially thought they were and well I generally don't deal with smoke alarms because they usually have um, mercury inside them. So, so yeah, this drill kind of works differently. It's it's quite good and it's got three speed. I've got it on um, just uh, two speed, but it's also got a uh, a setting for uh, decking. So, so you've got speed two, speed three, and then that's for decking. Um, I'm not sure why. Okay. Yeah, it sounds completely different. So, not that I don't think I'll ever be doing decking, but there must be a reason. Wow. A nice chunk of aluminium, nice piece of extrusion. Keep that. Oh, actually, this is cast aluminium. Bonus. Bit extra value, but uh, so this is the base of the board, and uh, so we can see quite a lot of stuff going on there. Got two little, uh, two of these little network type cards with little gold fingers, so. I'll uh, I'll get onto them and uh, check out the MLCCs, see whether what they're like. I might pluck some of them; they look all right. 
And yeah, tiny little gold band crystal oscillator. Even though they're that small, they're just as good as any bigger ones. So I still take them, a couple of them. And it all adds up. That was a good board. So this big one, uh, this one's just plastic. So that smaller one <laughs> is more value so far than this one. Okay, that should be it. Okay, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, this one's a bit strange. So, what do we got here? got um, four kind of like network slot cards so it's pretty uh, cool this one wow oh, it's even got a little fan in there oh wow okay so, as you can see here, they're so little network cards, got little gold fingers, take them off always, we'll just have a look and see what's inside. Okay, oh, I've still got a tiny little gold band crystal oscillator as well, can pinch before throwing it into... Uh, just a mid-grade peripheral probably want to take off these stainless steel plates by the looks of them but yeah that's the brand Xeris 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 but the other side pretty intense uh, board pretty nice little board uh, these pulse things they are just got copper coils in there don't even worry about them those big boxes but there is a tiny little gold cornered uh, BGA a couple of nice big gold band crystal oscillators we want and then there's this heat sink here looks like probably another BGA oh yeah really nice big gold cornered BGA here so yeah it's a uh, you know, if it took off these plates, you know, you, you, this could almost go as a higher grade board, throw it into motherboards or something higher, because it is a good board. Well, I'd like to get a lot more of them, but that's the only one. But uh, because it came from a school, maybe uh, in the future, these will be the more, uh, more common when I go and pick up e-waste. Yeah, interesting. So I, I can put that stuff, even though it's got a bit of metal, I can still put it into plastic recycling because um, those that have seen the plastic recycling machine when I took in keyboards and stuff, uh, you can see that it's got a metal separator in it as well. So all good. And the only other thing I wanted to... Uh, scrap out aside from modems was this big uh, MBN box now this came for a whole array of um, kind of like NBN antennas square boxy things I didn't really bother with them uh, but this might be uh, I just wanted to see what's inside this uh, because it's still part of the theme that I'm doing here Wi-Fi kind of stuff well well, this is cast alley. It's most likely a, a zinc alley mix. Usually is when it looks like that, but that's good. Good weight there. Okay, looks like we've got a nice little circuit board here. Wow, look at that. We've gold flashing. Flashy flashing. So...
So yeah, it's a WNDTD outdoor unit. Um, yeah, part of some uh, Wi-Fi thing. It's the first one I've ever actually seen of this kind. So usually the huge Castelli big boxes that are got giant bolts and they're really complicated to un, uh, take apart. They've got a lot of bolts and screws. A bit of plastic. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Interesting board. This uh, thing here is another one of those gold fingers. The uh, T6. Yep. I had to buy a new set of Torx screws. So I bought a King Chrome. Uh, I thought I'd try the better quality ones because it, they the cheap ones kind of wear out. And I'm always looking for the first one you, I always lose or wear out is the T10. But T9 is important, T6. Yeah, so there we go. Um, it's quite a impressive little uh, board. Like that's nothing spectacular, but this little component here, and it's got all these little shields that no doubt are going to have stuff. So see if I can uh, pop a couple of shields just to see. Hey, so far not much. Yeah, as expected, you know, just tiny little BGAs and, uh, and stuff. So all I really want, I don't even want this uh, flashing, even though the gold fingers are, are kind of flashed in the same grade as this flashing. So, yeah, but I'm just going to take off these little gold fingers and just throw the rest in the just in mid-grade because I don't want to deal with it. To uh, recover that flashing, it's very light and I'd have to depopulate this whole board and I just don't want to do that. Whereas even though these gold fingers aren't anything special, I'll still throw them in with my regular gold fingers. Um, okay, so I guess we should have a look at what's actually inside this box, if anything. Well, we've got to separate it for plastic recycling. So, so that's it. It just says MBN. This wireless outdoor unit is the property of MBN Company Limited. Do not remove. <laughs> well, oh, hi there. Yeah. There we go. Nice plastic. PP. Oh uh, yeah, it's just one of those things again. So, really not much to it. I'd imagine mostly it'll be stainless steel anyway. Um, Could be aluminium. Don't really have the right size here. No, that'll do. Okay, let's just get it out of the plastic so we can get rid of one thing. Yeah, more plastic. It looks like stainless steel and yeah, it's all kind of either aluminium, stainless steel. 
interesting. It's like just an antenna port part. Really bizarre. Nothing much I can really do with it. Um, aside from just putting it into like aluminium, if I cleaned up all the screws or irony alley. But me, I'll just probably just end up putting this into clean pressing steel. Because uh, I think I, I did mention um, in a video or two ago that I'm not really worrying about uh, aluminium, like uh, domestic aluminium. I'm not, I don't, I'm not having a bin for that anymore. It's just not worth it. So all I'm doing is extruded aluminium and cast aluminium. Um, yeah, it's just... Uh, Domestic aluminium takes up a lot of space, and for what it's worth, um, I'd rather have that bin for other uses, and I don't get a lot of it. And I usually spend a lot of time trying to clean up little bits of aluminium just to turn it into aluminium. Uh, so, no, I'm not going to bother with that anymore. Yeah, these um, Wi-Fi boxes or switches or routers or modems what I call um, these are starting to come out very quite a lot I've got three of them here there's probably a few more in the garage somewhere I've got modems everywhere at the moment so but I can expect to uh, get a lot more of these kind of things in the near future because they're just coming out left right and center now how to get them out it's another thing Uh huh. Now I know. Might be just one screw. Ah, uh, two ten. Interesting. There had to be another one in there, of course. All right, well, straightforward. Bulky piece of plastic, take up a lot of space. Check that out, it's, uh, oh, okay. So they're a double board. Wow, that's pretty, pretty intense. Didn't expect uh, that. So this will take a bit of time to scrap out. And to work out. But once I've done a few of them, then I'll uh, I'll have the system in pat down pat and I'll I'll know what to do in future. But yeah, as I said there, I've got three right there more somewhere else and they just seem to be very common uh, so I think I can expect to find a lot more of them during hard rubbish street scrapping and uh, obviously I'm I'm not doing street scrapping right now because there's none going it's all uh, probably the best street scrapping area is coming up in uh, in uh, I think a couple of weeks so that'll be about five weeks of straight scrapping there and then it'll move on to one another area next to it so there will be a uh, quite a long run of street scrapping coming up but there's just nothing at the moment so not much I can do about it but it's a blessing in disguise because it's going to allow me to really catch up on stuff here and which I've been doing. I've been going like a madman in the last couple of weeks and uh, sorry about that, my battery just went flat. As I was saying, yeah, just uh, really been getting on top of things and uh, it's just been amazing and uh, really happy with how I've been going. Um, 
especially with all the small stuff it's been really cool so here we go so our first stage of the board we've got a huge heat sink here and and then there's shields underneath the uh, chips so I'm probably not gonna yeah bother losing weight on this although I don't really get much more with it on because can still get pretty good price for the uh, um, extruded anyway but uh, there you go it's uh, got a little sim card leave that in there <laughs> get a little bit extra weight but still um, well at least they're good value as far as circuit boards because we get two of them so I can't complain there they're just a little bit awkward to get out but yeah not really sure how they put these together I don't know how they worked it out like obviously some sort of CAD machine does it some sort of computer program puts it all together for them because geez it's pretty awkward like, who would think think to you know put it all together um, so more alien technology so yeah really really heavy boards so if you just throw these into peripheral boards you're getting good value there um, really happy there and a little bit of a bonus um, yeah it's not really aluminium it's kind of like zinc but you can kind of put this into cast aluminium because most yards don't get too technical um, you know depends on your yard my yard will just take them on I think as you know when you throw it in with your aluminium it all kind of or cast aluminium it all kind of looked this looks the same but those with uh, eagle eye at the scrapyard they will spot it out and they will say well that's actually zinc not aluminium but it's kind of the same value anyway and it's kind of I don't, they don't really worry about it so I don't worry about it I'm not going to have a special uh, bin just for uh, cast zinc alley stuff there we go still not super heavy but still it all adds up there we go get a bit of wire and we'll go for plastic so that was these that, that's really uh, <coughs> quite intense and these net gear ones I've done hundreds of these actually um, over the last couple of years literally hundreds I'm used to the board know all about them a tiny little uh, gold band crystal oscillator there I, I usually take these four MLCC's and sometimes I'll just take that little BGA there um, you also got your copper tape uh, you know um, it's very light it's not going to make a great deal of uh, difference to your copper pile sometimes if I can't be bothered I just throw them into brass still a lot better money than I'd get for the board but yeah uh, yeah so this is all I'm going to continue to do for the rest of this today anyway hopefully I get on top of all of my modems so I don't have to touch or think about modems for a uh, for a few weeks and start, until they start coming back in again um, or until I start doing street scrapping so before I go out there and and that starts again I'd like to have all my modems done and so I can start a fresh batch good heavy board good one still peripheral board does have a couple of nice little BGAs you know your memory type of BGAs that you might want to pop off before you throw this into your um, selling pile 
it's it's just up to you and and up to your buyer um, you know a lot of buyers don't buy partially depopulated or they'll um, devalue so you got to be really careful um, a lot of the times people that bring me boards that have been partially depopulated they will lose some value just depends on what's been taken off and how the rest of the board looks but to me i i can look at a board and even from a distance and i can tell whether you know it's had things picked off it so you've got to be careful in what you're picking off sometimes it's it's worth just depopulating the whole board these ones here actually i've got a whole bunch of these uh, quite a few of them came uh, brand new in box as well uh, so i don't know what the story of these ones they're neck gear as well these might be a uh, updated version of the one that i just scrapped out um uh and they these ones are telstra ones uh so i'm not yeah so I've, I've never done these ones before these are just new so this might be a an example of what's to come in the future might be the next wave of uh net gear modems and so far looks all right very straightforward to scrap out right okay well we do have um some good weight here anyway uh this when you're selling boards you've got to take off plates like this it's just not fair it's aluminium you can throw it into your aluminium if you've got one pile um yeah uh these aluminium ones here heat sinks um you can leave on but when they're on the back and they're just there's no reason for them to be on apart from whatever uh best to take them off um but this is a really good value board it's i've uh, got a lot of weight there's nothing on there i see for me to depopulate i'm not sure what's under these uh but because i'm not losing much anyway by removing the heat sink and and because these are new i'm going to want to see at some stage what's actually underneath them so i'll just take off this this plate and so we've got ourselves a nice clean piece of extruded aluminium here look at that nice nice for other little projects you know like for art and stuff because they're thin they're square they're you know uh light they're easy to handle yeah guys that like doing uh e-waste art would probably really like them okay so so there is a a pretty good uh, broadcom bga with uh, aluminium heat sink on top of it yeah not bad but in future i'll just leave them complete pretty cool another one yeah so i thought i'd just uh you know flick on the camera and just uh catch up with you guys didn't want to do anything too full on um i'm pretty satisfied at the moment with what i've done uh as far as my you know small scrapping out i've got a few empty bins now and so things are looking good yeah and so i'm just sort of uh biding time until street scrapping comes and by then a lot of things will start to come together because i'll have a, a lot of room to uh and probably access to the garage again so i can start um playing around with other things and uh yeah so that's just how it is i mean because it, uh scrapping street scrapping is just a hobby but there is a business element to it and so you know i've i've got a i've got to make money to actually make a living so i've got to go pretty hard and um and just try and focus on, on that kind of area because like this week um i already went to the scrapyard once i i i took in a batch of boards once um i've done four pickups uh, you know and so there's only so much time 
to actually do think of uh, doing videos and stuff so sometimes I've got to do these sort of chill out kind of videos straightforward where it's uh, yeah I don't know you you get me drift <laughs> but I'm happy with my little drill uh, and uh, I'm sitting here undercover you know scrapping this stuff out while you might be able to hear it's it's actually raining and um, good little board gold band crystal oscillator a crystal one two depopulate so yeah I'm just uh, just uh, having a chill out Saturday but uh, yeah, I know a lot of you want like watching my. Oh, uh, street scrapping videos. Yeah. I wish street scrapping was on every week, but it's just not. It just goes from area to area, and we just don't have that many areas left, unfortunately. So, uh, can't do much about it. It's only going to get less and less. Eventually, there won't be any street scrapping like uh, we know it. And it'll all get down to, you know, American style, where it's just go out there and hope for the best that you find something out in the street. <laughs> um, it's not going to be like the whole area all in one go kind of thing. So, but we'll just take it as it comes and well by the time street scrapping is completely uh, vanished from around here uh, hopefully I'll have other things in place that I'm uh, that I'm doing like uh, yeah I really got to get into those copper melts you know they're the kind of things that I enjoy doing and I just don't have the room or the time to um, prepare for melting copper want to get more into having fun so hopefully I win the lotto and I don't need to make money for a living and I can um, plod along and I'm st and I'm forever looking for a new van I just can't find one um, when I do find one I put it off for a week and then uh, and then it ends up being sold so I miss out on, you know, one that I might have wanted to buy. Uh, it's just, yeah. But I, I really do need to buy a second van just to, uh, for the business side of it, when I go out picking up e-waste, um, just have a one that's a little bit more presentable. And, I, you know, obviously I want a tow bar on this one, on the next one, and... Uh, but the problem is, if I, the trailer that I want is pretty big. It's eight, eight foot by six foot. And um, the problem is that right now I don't have anywhere to put it because it would just take up all the space in the driveway. I'd have to, um, I thought that I, I could make a little space at the front where the garden is where I could just put it in there and then just pull it out when it's full and um, take it to the yard but the problem is that this particular trailer that I want when it's full you can't move it like it's a it's a twin axle and it's just too heavy to move um, when it's full and so the only way I can hitch it up to a van I'd have to actually uh, uh, do a lot of work. I'd have to uh, redo my my front fence and get a permit to uh, extend the width of my driveway and actually in the garden actually put in a concrete slab. And so the trailer that I want is a hydraulic lifting trailer. So I can just go to scrapyard or wherever and just tip. And it's also for future. I want I want a hydraulic lifting trailer for uh, 
for um, like if I got a property country property and I want to cut soil and sand or whatever um, I can just uh, so I don't have to shovel it out I can just tip it wherever I want it but that trailer costs about seven thousand dollars and I don't mind buying the trailer uh, but the problem is to do the concrete slab extend the fence extend the driveway make it wider so I can uh, then back my van in to hitch up and drive out you know that might cost another seven or eight thousand dollars so um, all of a sudden I'm looking at spending fifteen thousand just to have a trailer and uh, whether that's worth it at this stage I'm, I'm not really sure so because I certainly have to do a, a lot of scrap steel to uh, to make that back so I'm not sure guys uh, but as long as the van that I do buy has a trailer tow bar um, you know then I'm halfway there all right guys well I've gone on for probably way too long so I didn't want to make a big video and uh, uh, this is just me for the rest of the days scrapping out these modems and um, yeah but as you can see for those that were wondering why I pick up modems well this is why I get my little boards and stuff like that there get a bit of value and why not because you can see the size of the modem um, no matter how big it is usually the board is the holes um, inside so there's uh, good value what pound for pound uh, they beat a lot of things can't go wrong all right guys well hopefully I'll make a video a lot sooner than uh, a lot earlier than next week so you know maybe in a few days I'll have a, a something a little bit more interesting we'll just see how we go keep scrapping have fun and I'll catch you uh, real soon <laughs>